Alrighty, guys and gals. How's everyone doing? Welcome back to the Misty Mountain Gaming Channel, or if you're new, welcome to the Misty Mountain Gaming Channel. I'm Big E. And this is going to be a very special series on the channel. I'm not sure what I've named it yet. But um, I was just doing some research. It's working on another video, doing some research. And I discovered that there are, in fact, many, many in-game memorials that Blizzard uh, has created over the years for Blizzard employees, um, friends of Blizzard employees, just super fans of the game, celebrities, um, YouTubers, you name it. Uh, Blizzard has created memorials for these people. And I was only aware of literally just a handful. I had no idea how many there were. So as I was reading all this information and looking at all of these different people, it, I just got inspired. I was like, I need to make a series about this. I need to touch on another side of the game that probably most people don't even know about. So that's what this series is going to be, and I'm going to break it down into different parts. Um, so this first series you're going to see is all of the memorials in the Eastern Kingdoms, and there are a lot, a lot more than I knew. The second series will be all of the memorials in Kalimdor. Then we'll go on to Outland, Northrend, Pandaria, Draenor, Broken Isles, Pultiris, and Shadowlands. Uh, there may be a few in Legion as well. Uh, there are also, the last thing I'll cover is there are special items in the game. There are weapons, mounts, uh, that are tributes to people who have passed away. And I find it very interesting and fascinating. Um, so I hope you enjoy this. And I'm going to try to pace it um, I'm not going to be doing traveling time and all that, you know, on camera. I'm just going to find the NPC and I'm going to read whatever information is available about that NPC based on a real person who has passed away. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. Sit back and enjoy. The first memorial or the first NPC we're going to visit is here in Stormwind, right inside the city gates. And he is located in the Stormwind Visitor Center, which is the first building here on the left. The NPC we're looking for is right here. This is Shea Pressler, and this is his son, Adam Pressler. And I'm just going to read the information that I could find. It says, Shea Pressler is named after a Blizzard senior database developer who passed away in 2009 from brain cancer. He was born in Nevada in 1975 and attended UC Irvine, where he obtained a bachelor in physics and an MBA. He was an avid WoW player who was best known as a dwarf priest named Lotion on the U.S. Dune Mall server, where he was an officer in the guild Trouble. He also played a Draenei shaman named Fishlips, who was in the guild Blacklist, also on the Dune Mall server. As well as the guild's damnation and indifference on U.S. Nerzul, Trouble transferred as a guild from Tychondrius to Dune Mall in 2005, and at that time, it was the best PvP guild on the server. While it was mostly a PvP guild, they also raided, and Shay enjoyed both the PvP and PvE aspects of the game. Shay had a great sense of humor, which never flagged despite his illness. The guild Trouble was a close-knit community whose members enjoyed kidding around with one another, and he knew many of his guildmates personally. A number of them lived in the same area of California, and they would head to the Tustin Brewery together on Friday nights. 
Che Pressler in game is a guild vendor and is located in the Stormwind Visitor Center, close to the Stormwind entrance. Next to him is a young NPC, Adam Pressler, named after Shay's real life son, who was born just before his cancer diagnosis. The next in game real life person, trade as an NPC, we're going to visit is right outside of Denman's family jewelry, family jewelers. And the NPC is based on Sparrow Fawcett. And I'm going to read uh, what I could find about her in reference to the game. Uh, it says she stands outside of the Denman family jeweler shop located next to the canal. Farrah Fawcett is a reference to the actress Farrah Fawcett, who was most famous for her role in Charlie's Angels. She passed away in 2009 from cancer, and this NPC was added two years later in patch 4.3.0. Farrah Fawcett is located in Stormwind City's Trade District and stands outside the Denman family jeweler's shop by the canal where she sells Cataclysm-era jewel crafting supplies. And, uh... A lot of people don't know. Kind of sad. Uh, Farrah Fawcett actually died on the same day that Michael Jackson died. And the reason people don't know that is obviously, you know, Michael Jackson was just a mega celebrity and just completely outshadowed her death. But this is her. She sells recipes. Interesting. The next NPC is also in Stormwind in the Mage Quarter. Uh, and he is right here. This is a tribute to Ron Nakata. It says he's located in Stormwind's Mage Quarter and stands outside the grass near the tall tower. Archmage Nakata is a tribute to Ron Nakata, who is a senior software engineer at Blizzard. Less than a year after his Disney fairy tale wedding to his wife, Linda, on November 24th, 2012, Ron was diagnosed with stage four colon cancer that had metastasized to his liver, lungs, and lymph nodes. He passed away on April 2nd, 2004. Ron attended the University of California, San Diego, where he attained a Bachelor of Science degree in computer engineering and a minor in music. He joined Blizzard in 2006 and became the single guiding force behind WoW's entire spell system. Everything that happens with spells and how they interact in the game is because of the work he did. He was also behind the calendar system as well. When you use that calendar and signed up for events, you were able to do so because of Ron. Such was his prodigious talent, knowledge, and intellect for what he did that when he had to take a sabbatical because of his health, Blizzard had to hire two people to do his job. His manager wrote on Reddit, uh, Reddit, Our spells and abilities are the core of our game, and there was only one person with the level of knowledge and drive on our team to make the tremendous impact he did. It seemed fitting to honor him by having him teach spells. And that is exactly what Archmage Nakata does. He bears the title Master of Spells and was added in patch 6.0.1. He can be found on the grass near the tall tower at the heart of the Mage Quarter in Stormwind City. There he is joined by NPCs named for his real-life family, his wife and his four stepchildren, Jeremy, Elizabeth, Naomi, and Daniel. There are two other children present as well named Jenna and Sammy, Posters on Reddit who know the family personally say they are no family. There are no family members with such name. Their significance is unknown. If you talk to Nakata, he asks if you would like to volunteer in today's lecture. I did not know any of this. When you click the volunteer option, you get transformed into a random creature while the children giggle at you. You receive a Nakata special buff when you are transformed, which lasts five minutes. And become and because of the test subject debuff, you must wait 30 minutes before you can assist in another lesson. 
Ron is remembered for his devotion to his family, his sense of humor, and his work ethic. He loved Disneyland and Maui, his two favorite places on earth. He also loved sports, especially baseball and hockey, and his favorite teams were the Anaheim Angels, San Diego Padres, San Diego Chargers, and the Anaheim Ducks. He was a fan of Star Wars, so it was no coincidence coincidence that the event for the celebration of his life, which he uh, which he had asked for instead of a traditional memorial service, was held on May 4th. That must be special. Was that when Star Wars was released? May 4th? Maybe. He was talented in music as well uh, and first met Linda, his wife, in high school marching band at the state championships. As well as receiving this tribute in WoW, Ron has also been memorialized in Wasteland 2. That's a game by NXIL Entertainment, where his friend John Alvarado works. Ron's fundraiser, Help Ron Beat Cancer, raised $43,000 to help his family with medical expenses that were not covered by insurance. That fundraiser is now closed. Let's interact with Ron. Ah, Warlock, would you like to participate in today's lecture? I am in need of a volunteer. Look at that. 30 minutes. A Nakata special. You have learned your... Have you learned your lesson? <laughs> I had no idea this was in the game. Really interesting. The next in-game tribute is here in the Cathedral of Light, and I have seen this NPC for years and years and years, and he generally will greet you whenever you come into the Cathedral of Light. And he is right here. This is Brother Sarno. And I feel really bad about this one because I've often kind of teased with this NPC. I'm going to read the information uh, that I see here. Brother Sarno stands inside the Cathedral of Light and is located on the left side as you enter the main area. Brother Sarno is in tribute to Richard D. Sarno, who passed away at the age of 58 from cancer on May 30th, 2003. That was before this game was released. Richard lived in Chicago, Illinois, and was a veteran who worked as a computer programming programmer for trucking parts company. He loved computers and gaming, was always positive and full of jokes, and he always knew where to get good food. I like this guy. Above all, he was passionate about helping people. He was a Blizzard beta tester and posted the old Blizzard help forums where he went by the name of Tikron. He was designated as the top beta tester of the Blizzard StarCraft Brood War Beta, and his tremendous knowledge and presence online earned him the second ever MVP designation for the Blizzard Technical Support Forums. He was also a founding admin for the website thehelper.net, a website which in its early days offered unofficial tech support via its forums for StarCraft and Diablo issues. In addition to helping people online, he sat in the Blizzard booth for at least one E3 convention, which is where many who knew him online got to meet him in person as well. His iconic status went even beyond the gaming community. Once, Tikron called Dell's technical support team about an issue that happened when playing Diablo on a specific Dell model, and the Dell rep was floored when he realized he was, he was talking to none other than Tikron. Dell had been monitoring the Blizzard help forums in the hopes of finding a solution to that problem, and they were well aware of Tikron's tremendous knowledge and ability to solve any issue that came his way. His NPC stands in the Cathedral of Light and cheerily greets visitors who, who pass by, a fitting tribute for not only does Brother Sarno resemble Richard Sarno in appearance, but the NPC's continual Friendliness exemplifies the enthusiasm and patience he always had for helping and educating other gamers. That is amazing. 
Uh, the sources for this is a Wowhead user, emberfry13. This was Tikron's, um, Tikron was his grandfather. It says it resembles the guy in real life, too. Now, these characters is probably more so the case in classic. These have been updated. So, I'm trying not to get, you know, too emotional on camera, but this stuff kind of hits home for me, especially stuff about cancer and anything that's going to have to do with children. It's just, you know, I've had a lot of people in my family pass from cancer, as I'm sure many of you have as well. The next tribute in game is also here in the Cathedral of Light, and she should be right over here. Here she is, Angela Layfield. She is the bandage trainer. This is a little bit different in classic, how it's laid out. It says, Angela is located inside the Stormwind Cathedral with the Paladin Trainers, first room on your right. Angela Leif, it's Leifeld, apologies, Leifeld, is named for the sister of Sherman Ohms, an artist at Blizzard. She was born in Kansas and lived in Illinois, where she was a fifth grade school teacher, a, scub, a Cub Scout den leader, and a mother of four. After a family vacation to the Southwest in June of 2010, Angela's hand felt funny. So she had it checked. After a variety of tests and medical visit, uh, visits, she was diagnosed with ALS. Now that's also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. There is no cure for ALS. After a nine month battle with the disease, Angela passed away on May 14th, 2011 at the age of 41. As well as ob obtaining a memorial NPC in game, Angela has a pavilion named for her at the William Zimmer Park in Waterloo, Illinois. It was built with funds donated to her while she was sick. She had passed away before all of the funds could be used to help her, so the pavilion was a way for her family to give back to the community which had been so generous. This... Uh, this gravestone here is a memorial. This is a little bit tough to find. This is Sir Nicholas Gabary. It says, uh, Nicholas's headstone is one of the headstones on your left just before you reach the path leading to the Tiffin Wren Memorial. Sir Nicholas Gabary is in tribute to Nicholas Wayne Gabary, who passed away in a motor accident on October 11th, 2012, at the age of 24. He had attended uh, Copperas Cove High School in Texas before completing automotive training at the Universal Technical Institute and Volkswagen Academy. At the time of his passing, he was a master mechanic at Monument Volkswagen in Houston. Nicholas enjoyed raiding and played a paladin named Divide in the Alliance Guild No Options on the U.S. Lightbringer server. He had previously been a member of other guilds, such as the Coalition, Sanctuary, and the Age of Wisdom. His friends, some of whom were Blizzard employees, remember him for his sense of humor, carefree spirit, and a zest for life. Sir Nicholas Gabary can be found in the Stormwind City Cemetery and was added in patch 5.4.1. To find him, follow the path... Past the cathedral into the cemetery, Nicholas's memorial is on your left right before you reach the large tomb and monument with the Lord Oran crest. His headstone is one of the smaller ones, and when you mouse over it, the gear symbol will appear. When you click on the headstone, a very translucent image of a human paladin appears, and when you in interact with him, he will say things like, do you know any good jokes? Uh, and he'll call you by whatever your race chosen is. And have you seen my comrades? If you tell him jokes, he laughs and has several responses, including, ho, 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 that's a funny one. Tell me another. And, aha, I'm holding my sides on that one. If he doesn't like the joke, he'll say, nah, I don't much care for that one. Do you have any more? When he disappears, he bids you farewell before yelling poof and vanishing in a cloud of smoke. Another nod to Nick Gabary 
and his paladin can be found with Nicholas Divide, a follower who can be recruited at the Alliance Garrison Inns. Once recu recruited, you'll see Nicholas Divide in Lunarfall. The Horde version is Tazril M2 Matril. No way I said that right. It's a blood elf who appears and wears the same gear as Nicholas. Farewell, Nicholas. Now, this next NPC tribute is one that I have never seen before. It's in the Royal Library, uh, which is back here. And we're looking for Stanley. And I'm going to read what it says in a moment. But he's currently not in here. Apparently, it is a rare NPC. Been through here a few times. I'm going to read what it has to say. I had no idea this was a thing. It says, um, Stanley for the Alliance side, also Stanley for the Horde side, are both in tribute to the legendary Stan Lee of Marvel Comics. He passed away at the age of 95, November 12th, 2018. Both NPCs were added in patch 8.1.5 and are rare elites who appear in Stormwind City and Ogremore. Upon arrival, they yell Stan Lee's catchphrase, Excelsior, and then walk around for a few minutes before fading away. The Alliance Stanley appears inside the Royal Library Room inside Stormwind Keep. He walks out of the room, waves to the Alliance leadership in the throne room, and proceeds down the flight of stairs before disappearing by the fountain. So he might be out there. Uh, this is a, a Wowhead user and Warcraft user. It says, From what I observed, it seems that both Stanley appears instantly the moment you reach their spawn points for the first time. But once they disappear, I'm not sure when or if they will reappear for you if you use the same tune, the same character. Whenever I visited either Stanley the NPCs would appear instantly as long as I took new tunes to the area, but if I returned later using any of those same characters, he did not reappear. I asked a friend who had not seen this NPC to come visit him while I watched, and while he could see Stanley, I could not. That's interesting, man. We were on the same server, so we stayed ungrouped at first, but even after we grouped up, I still could not see him. So if you plan to visit Stanley, be aware that this is likely a one-time opportunity per character. That is fascinating. So chances are, I have seen it. I have had this character, uh, by the way, as my warlock. This was my main character. This has been my... I've had this character since original Wrath of the Lich King. I'm fairly certain. So chances are I've already, this has already happened on this character. But we're going to run out here to see if his ghost is walking around. It's been a long time since I logged in here. So he pays a tribute and then he walks down the stairs. It's fascinating. Apparently, this is like an instance in here now. Yeah. Most likely, I've triggered this event on this character. Anyway, quite interesting. Our next in-game memorial is to... This is one that I did know about, but uh, I think I've given misinformation in the past. I thought he was actually a blizzard employee. This is Anthony Ray Stark, and he can be located um, Hillsbrad Foothills. This is Dungarok, where the dwarves are, and he's on this little ledge way down here. And this is Roush, and I'm going to read what it says about Roush. Roush is in tribute to Anthony Ray Stark, who lived from 1961 to 2005. Anthony was a mortgage broker who enjoyed getting together with friends to play WoW. He loved scuba diving and passed away during this activity after something went wrong with his heart. 
His friends, some of whom were Blizzard employees, arranged this memorial for him. Roush was his main character and pays continual respect at the site by alternately kneeling, standing, and saluting the monument. His gear comes from a variety of sources, raid loot, vendor items, and a quest reward, so it's likely the same gear that Anthony's character was wearing at the time and would also indicate that he participated in both raiding and PvP. If you click on the monument, it lists Anthony's name and the years that he lived. Anthony Ray Stark, 61, 2005. This is the first in-game memorial that I ever found in the game and, and looked up. I found this before I found the Shrine of the Fallen Warrior, which we're going to be doing um, when we do Kalimdor. This Anthony Ray Stark. Our next in-game memorial is if you are playing classic versions of the game, this is South Shore. Current versions of the game, this is the Ruins South Shore. And this area is not friendly for us. But there's a gravestone here. It's a decorated he headstone. And it says, in loving memory of Jesse Morales. I'm just going to read what it says about Jesse. It says, the headstone is found in the graveyard of South Shore and is recognizable by the flowers placed in front of it. Sadly, information is sparse about the, about the person behind the headstone. The headstone reads in loving memory of Jesse Morales. And it is in true, it is in tribute to a Blizzard employee who passed away while the game was still in development. And that is all I could find on this person. So was a Blizzard employee in the very early, um, you know, uh, before the game actually came out. Oh, and this is another one that I had seen and not really known what it was about. Farewell, Jesse. Our next in-game tribute is to Armando Ossix. And we are still here in Hillsbrad Foothills. And we are, this is the Alliance PvP little area. And supposedly he wanders this cave. Here he is right here, Captain Armando Ossix. Let's see what it says about, about this guy. It says he patrols throughout the cave that leads to the Alliance entrance to Alteric Valley. Captain Armando Ossix is in tribute to a player named Armando, who is a member of Cavallari del Alba. It's an Italian guild on the EU Dragonblight server. Back in vanilla, he played a fury warrior named Ossix, he loved PvP and especially Alteric Valley. He obtained the Grand Marshal rank. After he passed away, his friends and guild members asked Blizzard to let him be a part of the game. And the NPC was added in patch 1.11.1. He's captain of the Stormpike Guard and can be found walking back and forth inside the cave. Where did he go? Oh, he, he pats all the way back and forth. Here he is. There he is. Captain Ossix. Farewell, brother. Now, this next in-game memorial, i uh, probably have to take it in-game death here. Um, it's uh, in tribute to Brad Lawson, but it is in the camp, the Horde camp here. I do have a soul stone up. He should be on the second floor. I'm going to read the information that I have available, and then we're going to see if we can find this NPC. 
Bradford T. Karen, a.k.a. Brad Lawson. He is located on the second floor in the building behind the quest giver, Melissara. Melissara. His building is opposite the flight master area. Bradford T. Karen is in tribute to Brad Lawson. Brad was a mechanical engineer who had been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's uh, Hodgkin's lymphoma during the summer of 2014. He passed away in December of 2015. He was 34. Brad had survived cancer once before. At age 24, he had been diagnosed with carcinoma of the parotid gland, which would have been fatal uh, if not for a surgery. Several years later, he was living in Minneapolis, Minnesota, when he began to get periodically sick. Although doctors had never found anything wrong with him, he continued to get worse. And on July 3rd, 2014, he ended up in the emergency room where he began having trouble breathing. A CT scan showed that a large tumor was in his chest. After five days in the cardiac ICU, his condition was stable enough for the tumor to be diagnosed uh, and for treatment to begin. Despite the onset of cancer, Brad had a fiance, Alyssa. Alicia, uh, they were able to be married in the hospital sanctuary that same month. In November of 2014, his family started a GoFundMe page called Help Brad Beat Cancer. The GoFundMe page charted the ups and downs of his progress until December 2015, when they learned that the new and more aggressive chemo treatment was not working. Brad came home on hospice care and was able to celebrate Christmas with his family that same month. Then he passed away. Brad loved playing WoW and had friends who worked for Blizzard. He had been the guild master of the Horde Guild robot kitten happy train (laughs) on the uh, Ticondrius US server uh, since 2005. It is appropriate that Brad's NPC is located in Terran Mill because he and his guildies had loved to PvP in Hillsbrad Foothills. It is a classic back-in-the-day PvP area. Bradford T. Karen bears the title Master Taylor. Brad played an undead arcane mage named T. Karen, and tailoring was one of his professions. When you click on him, he says, burn it down, burn it all down. Ha ha ha. He also says, no matter how bad things get, remember that there's always an open car on the happy train. Toot toot. When you visit, be sure to do a train emote with him and he'll make the train gesture along with you. We're definitely doing that if we can survive long enough. As a final homage to Brad and his guild, prowling around the room are five felines, each named Happy, and they are numbered one through five. According to a Facebook comment, after his NPC was first screenshotted from the Legion Alpha on January 13th, 2016, Brad had been able to see his NPC before he passed away. Let's go see if we can pay some tribute here. So the flight master is here. So I'm assuming he's going to be in this building. Oh, here he is. Here he is. There's Bradford T. Karen. He's a master tailor. Oh, he's attacking me. (laughs) Farewell, Brad. (laughs) He's attacking me, which is appropriate since he loved PvP. Let's get out of here before we get wrecked by Brad T. Karen. Really cool, man. See if I can escape. Nothing's changed about this place. We had a combat. Just. Farewell, Brad. Our next in-game monument is here in Duskwood. We are at Beggar's Haunt, which is up here. And I, I found this once before, but I had no idea what it was. 
there is a path around the back here. And if you follow this path, it's a great little fishing spot. This is the unknown soldier. Now, this is not in classic. You don't have an actual person here. I'm going to read what it says about the unknown soldier here. In northeastern Duskwood, follow a stone, a stone archway past a ruined tower, and you'll encounter a secluded area sheltered by tall stone cliffs on either side, with a nearby waterfall cascading into a quiet stream. At the end of the valley are three stone arches behind a tombstone bearing the effigy of a man in armor holding a sword. Flanking the memorial area are two tall robed guardians with glowing eyes. Don't actually see that. Oh, right here. I've never I never even noticed these before. Yeah, I've never even noticed. Uh the unknown soldier is a level 20 rare spawn who was added in patch 4.0.3, and when present, he kneels before the tomb. According to the Wowhead user Joe Jitsu, I love his name, who witnessed the spawn when the unknown soldier appears. He pulls himself up out of the ground before kneeling at the site. The unknown soldier is most likely a reference to the custom many countries have of creating memorials for unknown soldiers, such as the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier or the Tomb of the Unknowns at Arlington National Cemetery. The tomb and its nearby crypts were created to memorialize the remains of unknown soldiers from four conflicts during the 20th century. World War I, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. It is guarded 24 hours a day, 365 days a year by elite tomb guard sentinels from the 3rd U.S. Infantry Regiment. The unknown soldier is in Duskwood. Uh, he is not able to maintain so complete a vigil, however, as he can be killed by players for gear or experience, but the tomb's brown-robed dark portal guardians keep a perpetual watch over the area. I did not know. I've never seen this this guy before. I have no abilities on my bar. I don't really want to kill him. We're gonna leave. We're gonna let him be. Very interesting. The unknown soldier. Our next in-game tribute is this NPC right here, who I've never ever seen. In the game before. This is Bjorn Floppy Freehand. It says he travels between here to this cart and the building. Let's read up on him. Uh, it says he walks up and down from a cart to a building at the end of the path, delivering supplies to refugees. I'm not sure if I'm saying the name correctly. It's B U I N. Bjorn Floppy Freehand is in tribute to Floppy, a legendary player whose main was a dwarf warrior on the U.S. Maelstrom server. He suffered from liver failure and passed away in 2010, the age of 38. He had also selfishly rejected the possibility of a liver transplant with his medical condition. He didn't want to use up a liver that could save someone else's life. Floppy was larger than life, a shooting star. He was a born leader who led by example and who always had a plan, whose excitement and optimism were infectious. He loved PvP, both world PvP and especially Alteric Valley. It's one of my favorites as well. Which became known among his friends as Floppy Valley. <laughs> uh, here and in everything else he did, his charisma and motivation inspired everyone, even though even those he had never met. There was no class he could not play. His, he dual boxed as well and loved to roll characters on new servers to see how fast he could level up. He loved harder and worked harder than anyone else his friends had ever met. And he brought enthusiasm and joy to everything he did. His friends recall that his only setting was 11. His friends recall that his only setting was 11. Oh, <laughs> So you turn it up to 10, you go to 11. <laughs> it's a classic movie reference there. He was involved in several guilds, the Shadow Watch, the Company, Amok, and Soulbound. 
After he passed away, a Blizzard employee who was a guild member arranged for Floppy's in-game tribute. Floppy had boundless passion and energy for helping people in-game and in real life. He had friends all over the world, and he gave his all to his friends and to everything he did. Nearby NPCs comment that Boyne has sold his belongings to buy food for Cataclysm refuge, uh, refugees, a fitting mirror to uh, Floppy's selfless generosity. Sources for this, it says, I am indebted to Floppy's wife, Sanguinetti, to Floppy's friends and guildies in the Shadow Watch and a mock for their memories of Floppy, and most of all to Shafty J. Corkstopper, who collected and compiled their recollections for me. What a legend. Give him a little salute there. Take care, Floppy. Our next in-game tribute, and this is actually the last in what would be considered um, the Eastern Kingdoms. Uh, this is Captain Phil Harris, and if you're wondering where we are, we are in Tol Barad. This is uh, out here. Uh, you can get here. I have couple ways to get here. I have like the tabard that ports me here, but you can get here via Stormwind uh, right over here on this island. If you've unlocked it, you can get out here. But um, this NPC, he uh, it's a quest for him, but I'll read what it says about him. Uh, it says he's found on a half-submerged shipwreck off the northern coast of Tolbarad Peninsula. Captain P. Harris was added in patch 4.0.3 and is likely a reference to Captain Phil Harris from the Discovery Channel show The Deadliest Catch. He passed away in 2010 at the age of 53 from complications following a stroke. Captain Harris roams around on a wrecked ship off the coast of Tolbarad Peninsula and is the objective of a daily quest offered for both factions. Uh, and that is all it says about Captain Phil Harris. And that is it for the Eastern Kingdoms. Um, our next series, we're going to do Kalimdor. Uh, right over here. Quite a few to do. And I'm looking forward to doing it. Anyway, kind of a weird <laughs> outro right there. I hope you guys and gals enjoy this. Um, it's, um, I don't know. I just thought it would be interesting. Just another look at the game, something that I've not really seen anybody else explore. Um, anyway, that is it for me. And that is it for the Eastern kingdoms. Join me next time for Kalimdor. You guys and gals take care. I will see you soon. Peace.